Hello, and welcome back to Dr. Hollowed. Today we're going to be taking a look at paranormal or supernatural experiences that made people question reality. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy the video. This all took place when I was younger, probably about six or seven. I was spending the night at my aunt's house who was also my neighbor at the time. The upstairs has a spare bedroom that I would sleep in while my aunt and uncle's bed was downstairs right off the bottom of the staircase. A street light shines in through the only window in the spare bedroom onto a wall with typical house decor more specifically what I describe as an artsy mobile. Mobile, like the thing that parents put over babies' cribs that have animals on them and play songs but this had feathers, gemstones and a dreamcatcher type thing in the middle and was suspended by a twine sting that hung from the wall. So I wake up at some specific time, I can't remember now 2 or 3 am, still laying in bed my eyes open to that artsy mobile no longer hanging. But string tautly held against the wall and the feathers and gemstones and such were pressed against the ceiling. Just to type this gives me fits of cold chills, I pieced out, walked home. Now thinking back it could have been some play on light that made the mobile look this way but I have no way to tell now. I was walking home from school with my best friend one winter afternoon. It was a cold but sunny day and the park was covered in a thin layer of that really light snow, the one that acts like dust. It was also poost, a traditional celebration, where you dress in costumes in order to scare the winter away. I went as a clown that year and I had the red nose and everything. As we were walking through the completely empty park and elaborating on the rules and characteristic of our own fantasy world the wind started to pick up and suddenly there was a small tornado coming our way. It reached us very quickly and it snatched my red nose from my nose, it went swirling up and then whoosh. Nothing. No tornado, no red nose. It all vanished. I remember it every now and then and it still puzzles me. I know we were kids with a very active imaginatium, visiting pretend spots with magic creatures on every step of the way home so making something like that up isn't out of the question. But I remember distinctly how thoroughly shaken up we both were, how we couldn't stop talking about it, and the fact that my clown costume is missing the red nose from that day onward. When I was a kid, my grandma and I talked a lot about ghosts because she actively believed in the paranormal. Being the innocent kid I was, I asked her to give me a sign when she passed away. Years later when I was around 13, I had long forgot that conversation with my grandma. It was Christmas Eve and she didn't answer any family members' calls. I tried called, and it was a shock to everyone that she didn't answer me. I was her favorite. After her cancer treatment, it was me she wanted to see. It was me she wanted to take care of her. I knew that morning that she died. It was weird. I just knew it. We kept calling and calling till my dad finally went on his own to her place. He found her dead. She had apparently taken her life. She took a bunch of her pain pills, had a glass of wine and died shortly after. My dad and his GF at the time stayed at her house the entire day while talking to police. They had to take statements and everything. Meanwhile, I stayed home with my sister. I was in the bath upset, trying to process shit when there was a knock on the door. We had those cloudy looking glass shower doors that you can't see through, so assuming it was my younger sister needing to grab a hairbrush or something, I told her she could run in and grab it. There was no answer, though. I got out of the shower and went into the living room to find my sister asleep. I woke her up and asked what she wanted and she had no idea what I was talking about. A few months later, the promise slash sign I asked of my grandma popped in my head and suddenly I was remembering it again. It was weird. Since then, it's been 11 years, I've had some incredibly detailed dreams about my grandma. I rarely remember my dreams, and when I do, they are never this clear. I remember one in particular where my grandma sat me down and was talking about life as there was a stressful event going on. It was like she was really there with me. I remember asking her in the dream how it was possible that I was talking to her because she passed away, and she would just shrug off the question and move on with advice. When I woke up after that dream, I realized I was crying in my sleep. It was the first time I had ever done that. It still feels unreal. I was trying to transition over from a day job to night shift by staying up the night before to get my sleeping schedule altered. I'd actually had a week to fix my sleeping schedule, but I kept failing and falling asleep when I'd lay down to rest my eyes. Stupid, I know. I laid down again, and had just closed my eyes when I heard someone walking up the stairs. With the house being 140 plus years old, you can hear everyone's movement. Old, creaky house. But, aha, yeah. One problem. I was the only one who was, and was supposed to be, at home. I was terrified. Thinking it was a burglar, I closed my eyes and pretended to be asleep. 
thought, hey, he could just steal anything he wanted and leave me be if he thought I didn't witness anything. The dumb thing about all this is that my room is literally filled with swords and daggers. Yeah, I have an arsenal of weapons and chose to play possum. I closed my eyes, and heard my bedroom door open, and footsteps creaking across the floor to my bed. Then, I felt someone leaning over me, and felt breathing, not cold or hot, on the back of my neck. I was pretty sure I was dead meat. A man's voice asked, in a patronizing tone, clear as day, do you really think you should be doing that? I sat up, and nothing. Nobody was there. My bedroom door was closed, a quick inspection of the house turned up empty, and there were no more noises. On the bright side, I was far from tired now. My heart was racing a million miles a minute, it felt like. I did question, for a moment, whether I'd just experienced sleep paralysis, but I'm very, very confident I didn't, as I didn't even have time to fall asleep. I used to live with a few friends a good few years ago now. One night I had ordered pizza and went downstairs to collect it once I got the your food is on its way text because my housemate who was home was already in bed and I didn't want him to be woken by the doorbell. I heard a noise or something coming from the top of the stairs and turned around to see what it was, expecting my friend or girlfriend. All I saw was what looked like a young girl's arm being pulled away from view behind the wall. It was fairly quick so all I remember was that it was either wearing a blue sleeve or the arm was kind of blue. But it definitely freaked me out a bit that I saw something where I heard the noise. I remember assuming that it was my friend, maybe checking who was up after hearing me, even though his arm would have been like two times longer, or my girlfriend. Friend was asleep and my girlfriend hadn't moved from bed, and even if she did would have made a lot more noise getting to and from the top of the stairs. Lots of other freaky stuff happened in that house but a lot of it is easier to find a decent explanation for. Right, so, I used to live on an area where people beheaded chickens, specifically my brother's room. And one day we decided to do some shit to it, can't remember what I was like 6 at the time, which required digging under the house. So my father dug it out most of it on the first day, and planned to leave the rest for the next day. When he did return the next day, overnight dirt had materialized where he dug it to the same height even but the pile of dirt from yesterday remained. He dug it again the next day, planning again to finish rest next day, and the same thing happened. Same house, while I was asleep, still like 6 to 7 at the time, my mother would walk into my room as she went to bed, and always right on cue at 11 o'clock all my toys and other electric stuff would go off at once. Planes would fly around, lights would flash. But I remained asleep. Still this house, my mother was at the table eating lunch, she heard our back door swing open and softly close. She called out hey honey thinking it was my father. No response, she assumed he didn't hear her. 20 seconds later and my father walks in. She says didn't you hear me earlier? He goes no I've just come back from shopping. Once we got adjusted to the chicken ghosts and they, us. They left us alone more or less, our toilet seat would randomly open and all my toys would go off, but overall they calmed down. Later we discovered there was also an early settler couple living there by a friend who looked after our house. For non-Australians early settler is late 1770s. And now other shorter ones from other places and people. My friend was trying to sleep one night, heard taps on his door getting louder to the point his door literally shook and when inspected it was discovered it was beaten to the point of the nails holding the hinge were bending and loose. People can be seen randomly down my friend's hallway, there are ghosts populating his house confirmed. Everyone who lives there can see them and they check out, I asked one where is, ghost name, right now? and go to next person and ask them. They'd all get the same location. He is described as an later age man. My sister 11 and I 13 were living at this condo with my mom and her boyfriend and it was a little home with two rooms and my sister and I had bunk beds so we slept with each other in the same room. But one night I started experiencing sleep paralysis and had seen this tall black figure just staring at me with red eyes and at first I thought it was a dream but I could feel every sensation of my body so I knew it was real but what I was looking at wasn't. I didn't know what sleep paralysis was until my sister told me about them. Soon after that experience I started having a chain of them for about 4 months and each time got worse and worse and eventually I started see things like faces or people walking down the hall, almost like ghosts were roaming and living there. No one believed me and thought I was lying for attention. I tried telling my sister but she told me she wasn't falling it for it since her and I would always make creepy stories to scare each other but I honestly was scared to death by the things happening in the house. It wasn't until my family had a cookout with all my other family that my sister experienced something even scarier. She didn't tell me until she became 16. So my sister and my mom's boyfriend would always play hide and seek with each other and try to scare one another. While everyone was outside enjoying the cookout and kids were playing with each other, 
My mom's BF asked my sis if she could go inside and grab a couple of spices for the meat. So my sister went inside and grabbed them and was about to come out until she saw a hand holding on to the edge of the door of my mom's bedroom. My sister told me that she stared at the hand for a good five seconds before it pulled away from the door almost as if it was asking her to follow it. My sister assumed it was my mom's BF and walked into the room and called him out saying she wasn't scared since she seen his hand on the door, but my parents' bedroom window had a clear view of the backyard and when my sister looked through it she saw everyone was still outside and realized that no one was in the house with her at the time and she totally freaked out. Before that event happened my sister and I always felt that my mom's bedroom was always cold and felt heavy in a sort of ghostly way. After that we moved out a year later, didn't have any sleep paralysis and sister didn't see anything creepy after that. Totally creepy stuff has happened a lot at that condo, like channels on the TV changing on its own, seeing balls of light at around 2 AM, and hearing footsteps outside of my room, I'd always heard stories about ghosts and other paranormal things but living there it made me believe that such things can exist and I don't question it and just believe it's real since I don't have any explanation for any of it. Hurricane Sandy, I lived on Long Island, which was pretty badly hit. A tree had fallen in my backyard and crashed through my roof, and one of the branches penetrated the ceiling in an upstairs bedroom. The tree had essentially cut my roof in half and was laying in my attic. Power had gone out shortly afterwards, and we were without power or water for nine days. One night during that week, I had come home from a friend's house around midnight. We had a fireplace in the living room that I would sit by and smoke cigarettes, six years smoke-free. I'm sitting there in the pitch-black living room, minimal light coming through the windows, and I'm thinking to myself I'm not going crazy, I'm seeing shit move all around this room. I was sober, most definitely not hallucinating. The best way I can describe T was shadows moving all around in the dark room. I decided it was very strange and my eyes were playing tricks on me. I went to walk downstairs to my room, and as I passed the stairs leading up, I heard voices in my mother's room. I chalked it up to her having her TV on, no big deal. The next morning I'm in the kitchen making coffee and my mom comes downstairs and says was there an earthquake last night? I more or less laughed at her and confirmed there was definitely no earthquake, and I asked her why. Her response is something I'll never forget. I woke up around midnight and my entire bed was shaking. Almost coming off the floor. The same time I'd heard the voices coming from her room. I hastily anointed all doorways in the house with salt at the base and affirmed only light lived there. Never anything negative feeling like that ever happened again. And while we're here, sorry this is so long but this is another good one. When I was super young, maybe 4 or 5, I remember waking up and seeing a girl in white staring at my bedroom door. I was looking at a side profile of her. I was so scared, I went under my blankets and didn't come out. The only reason I remember it so vividly is because it was summer, and I was so hot under there that I was sweating, and I just wanted to come out but I was too scared. I never told anyone, and went all of my life thinking I made this up or it was a super real bad dream. Flash forward 18 years, I'm sitting in my apartment getting drunk with my older sister, and I tell her this story. As I describe the ghost, she knocks her glass of wine off the arm of the chair. She then informs me that when she lived in that room in high school, she saw the same exact ghost. And the reason she remembers it so vividly was because she woke up, saw the ghost staring out of the window and said Amy, our oldest sister, go away you're scaring me. Same ghost, a decade apart. Neither of us had ever told anyone else our stories. It was at that moment I realized I wasn't making my memory up. Let me preface this with saying that, prior to this event, I hadn't slept for 60 hours, fuck international flights goddamn, so it could very well have been entirely imagined, and likely was, as there are no similar events that have ever happened to me. I also have very vivid dreams that are hyper-realistic, so it's possible that as I was so exhausted, my brain began. Breaking down? I'd exactly. Basically, I got back from a tour of Europe with my family and we arrived home around 3 p.m. We forced ourselves to stay awake until around 9 or 10 p.m. in order to minimize horrible jet lag the next day, and I was the last to go to sleep around 10.30. However, our bathroom is across the living room from the bedroom hallway, so after showering I had to pass through there and therefore pass the sliding glass door to the backyard. Unfortunately, we had forgotten to turn on our backyard lights so it was pitch black, but as I was passing, I thought I saw something out there. Not unusual to see movement, as it could be a tree rat, possum, or a squirrel, but this looked different to any of those. I go closer and take a look and my eyes begin to adjust to the darkness outside. All of a sudden, what looks like a black figure comes into focus with a featureless face, from what I could tell, and is facing straight towards me. He is standing perfectly still, but on the edges of the door, I can see other figures beginning to creep into my line of sight. 
I get the fuck out of there and run to my room, locking the door behind me. Since I'm not religious, I didn't really know what to do, so I just put a chair up against the door to keep it from opening and laid in bed for a while with the lights on until exhaustion forced me to just pass out. My family had just moved into our brand new house, we had it built, when my brother was 7 and I was 6. In our old house my brother and I had to share a bedroom, but in the new house we had our own. Naturally we missed each other's company so I slept in his room with him. In the new house my parents' bedroom was downstairs and our rooms were upstairs. Being young kids we developed separation anxiety and would often go downstairs and sleep on our living room sofas in order to be closer to our parents. One night he and I are particularly anxious, not sure what spawned this. Instead of just laying down on the sofas we decided the only safe place was in our parents' bedroom. We had snuck into their room before, because this was a fairly common occurrence my parents kept a cot on the floor for us, but this night of all nights they had the door locked, for obvious reasons. Just a disclosure, I understand, and understood back then as well, how air pressure worked. When a lightweight door is cracked and the air conditioner comes on it can force the door shut. As we're standing in their doorway just waiting there we both look across the living room door at our laundry room, no clue what prompted us both to look at the same time? Kids have some weird intuition. The door was wide open and out of nowhere slammed shut very forcefully. This was a very lightweight door and the only way to shut it was to physically assist it the whole way until it latched, so air pressure from the AC turning on isn't a possibility. Naturally we freaked the fuck out and began banging on my parents' door, after waking them up we had our dad investigate it. Of course he didn't find anything and he and my mom wrote it off as us having wild imaginations. To this day I have no clue what happened. I know this story doesn't sound very scary, but put yourselves in the mind of a 6 and 7 year old for better perspective. That area of the house gave me the creeps up to the day I moved away for college.